beings that are trying to take over an alien planet, or you're telling a really uh, uh, kind of like Last of Us is one that gets touted in the video game industry all the time. It's kind of a, a zombie story, but where it really hits is it's a story of a, of a man who meets this girl, and they're not father mm-hmm. and daughter, but to survive in this universe, they're kind of put together in this survival relationship, and it's, it's the relationship between those two characters as, as it grows and, and, ex- and explodes over the game that really attaches people and, mm-hmm. and puts them against you know conflict throughout the game that tests that relationship like should he abandon her should he stay with her how, how much you know compassion does he and empathy does he actually feel for her those are stories that you really see develop and, and pull people in and you know when you attach that with good fun addictive right. gameplay that we all kind of like from a motor mechanical skill way man that's when the that's where the big sellers come mm-hmm. from and the big game, games come from so so in your view writing for games it's a new form it's something new but something different it's a new form of writing it's it's very different and you know some games are there's some games now that are that are very much like a, a traditional movie problem was mm-hmm. a closer analog to a novel where they're written in a linear format and while you have some gameplay in it they're very much scene to scene to scene experience and those games are definitely designed with an arc a traditional story arc where you're thinking about the beats and you're you're even thinking about the narrative inciting incident and marrying that to gameplay that goes in but like borderlands you know, it's a 30 hour play. Borderlands 2 is a 30 hour play experience if you don't do the side quests, 80 hours if you do that. And we, wow. we have, we write, um, we write uh, Borderlands uh, 2, 21 chapters in the main story that you go through, each of which then go about, you know, 30 to 45 minutes. And then about 100 side missions that can be anywhere from 30 seconds long to a, a, a 20 or 30 minute experience. All of those with character development and narrative and, and voiceover that we have to direct and all that. So it's written very differently. You know, it's, 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 it has sometimes doesn't happen in the order that you want to happen, happen in. One because of the, problems, the players can go in different directions. Oh, sure. We want no to be in, in linear map. Right. In our game, we want to give them the freedom to do what they want. So we have to think outside the box with how we present narrative. Uh, we have the problem. Our game is a co-op game. You can play with three of your buddies. And at any point in time, we don't know where they're going to be in the map and where they're going to be. Listen, so if you're talking about problems with point of view and getting people to pay to a certain narrative and all that, like you may be getting the, the most important narrative information for the plot that you need over here. And three of your friends have wandered over to check out, you know, the the the, the skag camp over on the other <laughs> side of the zone. And they're just they're just having a good time. Like, this is important. This is like the meat of the story right here. So we actually have to like tag information where we do that and think about when and how we present it. And we can't take control, you know, of the character or the player because they really, really hate that. They hate losing control. Mm-hmm. So you really have to think in different kind of circles and you have to pace it differently. But we are still critiqued like traditional narrative in a lot of sure. cases. Players lose the plot thread. They, 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 they hit us for it. If it's not funny or not entertaining or doesn't work or the writing's boring, or we have to do all of that as well. So it's, it's a huge challenge, very different. But at least one major aspect of that is writing. And yes. it's clear just listening to you talk that it, to steal from Donald Moss, it's writing with a lot of fire in the fiction. Yes. And, and really, and also brevity and conciseness. What I really look for in a, in a good game writer for the guys that I hire are people who can write something in five words that blows my mind. Mm. Uh, a lot of times that's about the attention span we have for a gamer. And if you can, you know, short exchanges, great dialogue is a, is a big important of it because all of our all of our narrative is usually delivered in conversational format. Uh, no one has time to read. In fact, if we put writing on there, we test it all the time. They won't read anything. Uh, and mm-hmm. cutscenes, even the good cinematics, when we decide to take control of the camera and make a little mini movie insert in there, we have on the average of forty-five seconds for a scene that we might spend a million dollars on, you know, before people like check out and don't pay attention to it. So again, we we have to we have to pay attention to all the same tricks. We have to look at minutes. You were talking earlier, Don, about really like uh, uh, use the word was it micro 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 i had never used that phrase before but we have to think about the same thing it's literally every line and every phrase how am i constantly keeping your attention and keeping you engaged in the character in the story now we can also just visually blow something up on the screen and you know in the middle of that so we have some tricks that we can throw in there in the visual mediums but it, it still comes down to great writing does the limit of time that you can put on a cut scene or words or on the screen or anything like I mean is that really due to attention span or is it because they're less engaged now because they're not actually controlling anything really smart question it's both uh, you know certainly when we look at video games like 
there, there's some studies now that are showing, by the way, that the average age of, of a video game player now is in the upper 30s. It's not uh, your, 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 yes. your iconic 17-year-old. So it's one of the reasons that narrative is becoming more popular because we are hitting adult audiences now that have a little bit more attention span and patience for some story and some character development. But we have to understand that our audience range often spreads from, I mean, it shouldn't be under 18 technically to play a mature rated mm-hmm. game, but we know that they do down in the 11 and 12 year old range all the way up to 50 and 60 now. There's a wide spectrum of people in both genders that we have to hit. Uh, so we, we have to think about that. But yeah, you have, to, you have to earn their attention every second. We have a little bit of a leeway there, but you still have to earn it every second. Again, it's, it's, it's not anything different than Don was saying earlier there. Right? It's, it's every minute, every second, and what you're doing and how you're crafting and what you're playing. And a, a lot of the same techniques, like not only are, am I enjoying what's now, am I engaged to keep playing? Is what I'm doing keeping me interested in the game? Um, we do a lot of testing to look at like what's the cutoff point. Do p- players stop playing and at 30 minutes, at an hour, and at two hours, how many of them complete the game? We actually have metrics on the game. We, in our games that we release, we can actually statistically analyze how, how long players in the wild, you know, play the game and where they cut off. And we look at those moments and we mm. think, did the, did the gameplay become repetitive? Was there something offensive in the narrative content? Was, was there just not enough interesting moments mm. in the narrative content? Were they in the same place too long? I wish we could get that for, for fiction and novels. <laughs> really? When, at, what word on what page did you stop reading and throw this book across the room? Well, I'm, I'm surprised that you haven't yeah, talked to like Amazon Audible and, have that Google, and a few of those. Week. I mean, there's, there's some that are doing that right. With audiobooks, you could get those yeah. metrics. It's a little harder with fiction. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Randy, it's my tradition for these interviews to always ask at least one completely impossible question. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> that the interviewee has had no time to prepare, prepare for. So here it is. If you were going to give an aspiring writer, somebody who aspired to write for games, one really good piece of advice, what would it be? Write well. Give me a little more, though. Sure. <laughs> um, more specific. One piece of advice. I, I, you know, I have my seven or eight, but if I had to just hold down to one, I mean, when I, when I, I, I'll go back, when I, I'm looking at a writer. We've had some open positions recently, and I've hired a couple of a couple of people, and we're kind of building out a narrative department. In previous games, we had a writer, and uh, and we had them write several hundred thousand words in the couple of years, and we completely just burned them out on that, wow. and you know changed it three or four times completely in that. So now we have a team, and we're functioning better there. But as we built the team, and and we've really looked at the resumes and looked at people. At, at the end of the day, when I get writing samples in, and I look at the writing samples that come in, I, again it gets back to the same thing that I was talking. About about that we really measure for. I want to see in just an interaction or two, a dialogue that you've already pulled me in with the character, that you said a sentence or you've said you've said a statement or have something interesting that they have to say, or they're doing an interesting action or implying an interesting action. You know, at, at the end of the day, good writing is always good writing. When I mm-hmm. look at game writers, I want to do that. Now, if I wanted to add one B okay, there. Okay, you can. For, for games, it's also really important that you think about the fact that it's a game and you understand that there are differences with the way that you have to present your fiction in a game than you do in other traditional media. So you need to play games. You need to understand some fundamentals of game design, or e- game design even as a writer, so that you can adjust your dialogue, adjust your pacing. Like if you have big chunks of narrative, if you're used to writing like beautiful prose that's like seven or eight sentences long, like can you get that down to two? And can you say the same thing? And can you put an interesting word in there that, that the voice actor could turn into gold? You have to start thinking that mm-hmm. way and thinking presentationally so that you can get in there and, and write something well. You can usually tell that in, in just a few exchanges of dialogue on the scripts that we get in and the, the resume submissions. Thank you, Randy. That's really terrific. Randy, thank you again for that terrific interview. And let me remind everyone once again that my latest Red Sneaker book on writing, What Writers Need to Know, is now on sale, available everywhere on ebook and print formats. For the next podcast, I'll be on the WriterCon cruise sailing somewhere in the Caribbean. So those of you who are joining us can be a part of the podcast. And those of you who aren't joining us can still get a little bit of the flavor. And who knows, maybe next year you'll want to join us for the WriterCon Cruise. Until next time, keep writing. 
And remember, you cannot fail if you refuse to quit.